Hi, this is Matt Bradley Shurgy, about to start the stream of this uh, For Alice Magical Autistic Girls by Mia. Just sending out a tweet real fast. Um, Yep, this is Matt Bradley Shuri. Um, sorry for that delay there. I am doing a review of an indie game for Alice Magical Autistic Girls. This is a visual novel. So, you know, it's a lot of reading, kind of choose your own adventure sort of things, but this is unique in that it's um, translated in English and uh, also is available in uh, French, uh, or the French they speak in Quebec, uh, Canada. And the uh, I believe the creator of the game is also autistic, so you're getting autistic uh, representation in a game. Uh, not just one character, but all four main characters. Um, it looks kind of a Sailor Moon thing going on with this theme song. So uh, let's see uh, what's going on with the game. Um, the developer is Mia, so thanks again for the review key, and let's get started. Pretty standard menu here. You get some options. I always like to check those out. You can do windowed. I wish you could choose resolution. I say this every time. Um, you can choose what to skip. That's kind of a nice touch because some people, you want to replay to get all the endings so you can skip, you know, nearly anything to make the replays faster. And you see the different flags. I'm picking English because I cannot speak French. Um, you can speed how quickly the text goes, the transparency, all, all pretty standard options. Nothing too weird here. If I click help, is it going to take me to a website? It does not. And uh, talks about toggling a few things. Um, if this all fit in one space, aesthetically, that would look nicer than having to scroll for just like one letter. But uh, I'm being picky here. Extras. You can listen to the music when you get further in the game, I guess. And uh, all those nice transitions is something indeed. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, what? Really? This is what they're doing for the... I mean, this art's pretty simple. Uh, this looks like this, a photo of the sky. Uh, and yeah, let's go. I look down, I see my blue jeans, I look at my feet. They are, wear they are wearing sporty lace-up shoes. My feet are moving, one and two and three and four. Uh, I do want to point out, I think it's really cool with the font. You can choose to make it, uh, I choose to make it more readable, so it has this black background. You don't have to do that. And I also chose the font for um, dyslexic uh, people. I have a little bit of that, although it's more when I speak than when I read. But I just think it's, um, especially on a big monitor, it makes things just a lot easier to read. Your mileage may vary. There's a few other font choices uh, in the game, but I love this uh, accessibility option there. I raise my head to look ahead, but I take all the time to look at my black coat. It hides uh, my green lawn sleeve shirt. I've never liked black, but I'm not complaining. Now this girl looks a bit confused, maybe a bit nervous, pensive. It's too much trouble with the others. Others is in capital, so what does this character mean? Don't know. There's my dog. Hooray. In front of me, there are buildings. Above the sky, the sun, the clouds. It would be nice to be a cloud. A cloud can't feel anything. A cloud's life is simple. So this is the first choice. Little by little, I am drifting away from reality. Uh, reality is in capital. I'm guessing maybe the character will have um, either like a fantasy or maybe they go to another dimension where they look like sailor scouts or whatever the magical powers are. So does the character keep on daydreaming or you can choose no? I will say daydreaming. It looks like that's what the character wants. I keep on daydreaming. It's so much more enjoyable. Now well, that's nice. I get the... Being a bird would be nice too to spend my days flying, singing. I mean, this is already really... 
interesting in that most of these narratives have you very quickly meet some characters. In this one, it's all internal monologue, uh, monologuing. And um, the way this artwork of like the, the bird and the shading um, looks a little bit like airbrushed uh, look you saw in the 90s a lot. I picture myself in all kinds of forms, from a bird to a cat, from a cat to rain, from rain to a simple rock. They don't have to go to school. Oh no, school! So here I think it's going to force you to wake up, probably. I glance at my cheap digital watch, which is also black. It's 8.15. The class started at 8. So she is late. No, I'm late. I run to school, but I don't take the time to look carefully before crossing a busy street. Is she going to die or go into a coma? I don't know. Um... This artwork here, the cars, it's okay. Like this kind of anime thing going on with uh, this character, uh, I think works, but the cars, it's, I don't know if I'd say too simple. It might be too busy actually. Maybe it's too much stuff on the screen. Uh oh, a car hits me. Yikes. The impact is very violent. I pass out, I imagine so. Later on, Alice Lorange, a 16-year-old Quebec girl who lives in Six Luminol, passed away. Oh, wow, she died, okay. She leaves behind her mother, Raoul Lorange, uh, her father, Sean Mabus, and her classmates. Um, I cannot speak French, really, so uh, I apologize for my uh, pronouncing things incorrectly. The ghostly figure of a red-haired teenager materializes, and she reads the newspaper. And now it's like she's a ghost. Ellis Lange, I wonder who she is, but I'm sure she never had any friends at school. But why am I here, and who am I? So, this trope you see in uh, anime and, and video games, especially RPGs a lot, is that the main character suffers amnesia, and you kind of go on an exploration on who they are, or who they think they are, and um, it makes for kind of an unreliable narrator sometimes. Premature end number one. Don't be late. So maybe because we dealt with the daydreaming, this is icy. We already got one of the endings of the games. Because we stayed in the daydream, we get hit by a car and died. And now we're getting the credits with different art artwork writing by Mia Blaise Cote, uh, music by some other people. Oh, Kevin McLeod, he does the stuff over at... Um, What's that website? He has a lot of good music you can use for free with the license on there. In Copitech, there it is, yeah. Okay. Freesound.org, yep, I've used that one too. And they mentioned this, the license type in the credits, which is nice. And yeah, that there's a theme song at the beginning is neat. Um, credits to fonts. It's a little bit odd, but I'll take it. Background images. I mean, yeah, so this person went out to, to use some outside work for the artist, right? It wasn't all one person doing a, a one-person one show. Pretty neat. So you get to see this concept art and stuff here. That's kind of a neat way to go. Um, these credits could go a bit faster, but... Especially if it's like your first game, people tend to... This is true of like student films too, they didn't have credits that go on forever. Uh, and yet, it's neat they're crediting people and, and all these things. This was made in Renpi. Okay, that's a very popular visual novel um, maker that you can just use anything as simple as a uh, as a text editor to do your code in and then you can compile it. Um, because it's an offshoot of Python. Oh, that's a real neat logo. Huh. For a game studio. Neat. So we got the first setting, so let's go. And if we go into extras, can we go in the music room? Yes, we can, and we can start listening to everything we've heard so far. Let's, uh, let's try it again and see how quickly we die. So I give my impressions of this game. It's available on Steam. It just came out a few days ago. Chapter 1, Chaos at School and Home. So, you remember before they said skip? I'm just going to skip to uh, where I made the choice. So I don't have to click all that stuff. So I'm going to choose no, right? 
And you can use the mouse or the keyboard to uh, advance the dialogue. Get a grip. You have to go to school. What time is it? I glance at my cheap digital watch, which also is black. 7.45, class starts at 8. I mean, this part so far is the same. Well, I still have time, but I can't dawdle anymore. I look ahead again and keep moving. Yeah, so this is a different screen, right? Now this is where the two paths diverge. My name is Alice Ronge. Yes, like an orange. I'm a 16-year-old uh, Quebecer. As I continue walking to my high school, my red hair, wavy and down to mid-back, seems to rise in rhythm with my steps. It makes me feel like I'm doing a weird dance, yet I remain focused. My green eyes are fixed on the objective. I have to get to school on time. My school's name is St. Andorra. Long ago it used to be a religious school, but not anymore. My hometown is Six Luminial, known for its six historic uh, monuments, its light displays, and it's, uh, I guess because of the font cho choice I did, I can't really read what it says under here. It says mineral water, but um, that should have sort of a bug. It should have been tested with the different fonts and, you know, maybe move it up so there's a bit more headroom, all or a bit more room on the borders. Because you don't want to get this stuff overlapping, ideally. I should feel proud to live in a famous town, but I couldn't care less. No matter where I live, the others are always there. Okay, we still don't know who the others are. As for my skin, it's pale with pink undertones. Of course, I have freckles. They have never bothered me. Yeah, a lot of people I know with freckles uh, don't like it. I arrive at St. Andorra ten minutes later. I only have five minutes left to take off my coat, get my things, and go to my first class of the day. Come on, let's go. I go to the hallway where my locker is. It's crowded. As my brain says, danger, and pressure builds up in my head, I push through the crowd of students. I reach my locker. I put away my black coat and take my textbooks. Mathematics, I start with math class. The pressure in my head immediately turns into great pain. My brain screams, danger, danger, danger at me, and I have to restrain myself from running away. This artwork here is nice. I like this better than the drawing of the cars. Um, so, she, you know, the, she goes into class, Alice does, and uh, gets to sit down. My math teacher, Mr. Dupois, says, uh, I don't have to storm in, but I am not late, but I don't listen to him. I'm in too much pain. I have to ease the pain. Other students come in. I don't look at them. I stare at my desk. Yeah, I remember doing a lot of this uh, in school. Just a lot of wanting time to speed up and just staring at the ceiling or the desk or what have you. So laminate top, oak color, metal legs. She's thinking about the uh, chairs. Ah, and she describes the description mentally over and over again. This usually helps reduce the pain. Kind of a, a security blanket sort of thing. Laminate top, oak color, metal legs. Mr. Dupas announces the class is starting. He recites the lesson while writing on the board with chalk. I don't listen to him. Laminate top, oak color, metal legs. I can feel the other students' stares on me, although their eyes are all focused on the blackboard. La laminate, laminate top, oak coat, color, m metal legs. I imagine their thoughts about me, their scorn. I can't focus anymore. The pain, rather than decreasing, increases a notch. N no, come on. You can do it. You can hold on. La lama laminate. She's trying her little... Uh, a prayer that she's doing, and we can see a different uh, look of the graphic. Now she's the, she's crying, right? My eyes get wet and tears start rolling down my cheeks. S survival. I can't do it. I cried my eyes out. I have failed. And I think now, from you know, the point of view of the other students, they probably think, who's this crazy girl crying in the back of the class, right? My survival. I can't hold back my sobs. Mr. Dupont, hearing me, asked if everything is okay. I force myself to look at him with my puffy eyes, and I make myself speak to him. I, I am fine, sir. In the most neutral tone possible, as if I had no emotions. The teacher insists, but I wipe away my tears and tell him it'll pass. Survive. So Mr. Dupois resumes the lesson. I look at my desk again. My tears are still flowing. I'm on the others. After math class, I go back to my locker. My eyes can't produce any more tears. That's nice, but my head still hurts. Probably dehydrated. Ah, okay, finally another choice. 
If only I could get out of here, but wait, I can, can't I? I kind of want to see her die again as I'm wrapping this um, kind of reaction preview thing to the game up. Let's do stay in school. Technically I can, but skipping school is against the rules. The rules are sacred to me. There's no way I'm breaking them, so I stay in school. Maybe this is what you're supposed to do. At least my other morning classes are nice. Uh, science and ESL, English as a second language. The rest of the morning goes by very slowly. I haven't learned anything from my other classes. Okay, I mean, so you get the idea here, right? I think the setting is unique that the main characters uh, are autistic uh, is, is good for um, more representation in that. I think a lot of it's just internal. What people, um, autistic people can uh, often be thinking of what others think of them is, is pretty neat. So yeah, I, I think this is pretty cool, very different with its uh, theme, although it's in a classroom, at least for now, that part is kind of typical, but it's a good way to get to know people, right? So, um, I met Bradley Shurgi. This is for Alice, Magical Autistic Girls. This just came out on Steam. Get yourself a copy, and um, I will check you out later.